Undoubtedly one of the greatest mysteries of all time, this question has a direct impact on every single one of us. It could provide answers to where our place in the universe is, and perhaps ultimately what our purpose is, if there is one. But there are still immense questions surrounding this mystery. How did simple compounds come together to create the first organisms billions of years ago? How did all of these tiny, non-living things come together to form the first living things? Did life arrive on one of the many meteors that used to bombard the Earth's surface, or was it formed here? What changed that suddenly allowed the first life to exist? These are the mysteries of life. We know roughly when life originated, somewhere between 3.7 and 4.5 billion years ago, and it is obvious that at some point during the earliest stages of Earth's history, several compounds came together to create the first biological cells. DNA or RNA must have been constructed, since these are what copy the instructions for how to build proteins, highly important molecules crucial to life. There are many theories to suggest how it may have been possible for all of these vital biological molecules to be formed, and in this video we're going to be looking at several of the more generally accepted ideas for the origin of life on Earth. The first one that we will look at is the hydrothermal origin of life. This theory states that life had its beginnings at ancient deep sea hydrothermal vents, similar to the ones that still exist today in some of the deepest parts of our oceans. These vents are natural geological formations that are created due to certain reactions that occur between the rocks and the ocean water. The vents leak out alkaline water from deeper down in the crust of the Earth, and this feature is a key component of the theory that this is how life began on Earth. To understand this theory, you first have to know how cells store energy. Putting it simply, cells must have a proton gradient. That is, they must have many protons on one side of their cell membrane, and only a few on the other side in order to store their energy. Cells today achieve this by using proton pumps, complicated structures in the cells that move protons across their membranes to maintain the gradient. However, these are very complex structures that could not possibly have suddenly come into existence. So the theory goes that life must have begun somewhere that had a natural proton gradient of its own. And, you guessed it, just such a place happens to exist. The hydrothermal vents. The alkaline fluids coming out of the vents had a very low number of protons, whereas the ocean water, which at the time of life's origin was fairly acidic, contained a greater number of protons. Therefore, it created a proton gradient from this difference in concentrations. Another feature of these alkaline vents is that they were highly porous, with many tiny holes throughout the structures that were filled with water. This led scientists to consider the possibility that these tiny holes could have acted as the first cells. Areas of refuge where the initial biological reactions took place all those billions of years ago. The process of metabolism could have originated in these pores, and the later construction of RNA may have begun here. Eventually, the theory proposes, the first membranes would have been made, enabling the newly composed biological systems to form as proper cells contained within themselves. They would then have been able to leave the pores in the hydrothermal vents and begin the long, spectacular process of evolution. However, some people have problems with this theory, and doubt that this is exactly how the first life developed. One of the problems that adversaries to this idea point to is that there is a lack of experimental data to support the theory. This means that although there may be a theoretical idea for how this process would have taken place, the actual processes have not been recreated in a lab, therefore not providing enough evidence to support the claims. There are also other problems that people have found with the idea, such as the molecules needed for parts of the development of cells not being compatible with water, and UV light being needed, which would not have been available at those depths in the ocean, leading some scientists to reject this theory. However, the hydrothermal theory is one of the better supported ideas for the origin, but whether or not it holds up will be proven with time. And, as a recent study that we will explore later shows, it might not hold up for much longer. Next, we will be looking at the RNA world hypothesis. This theory has been around since the 80s, and is relatively simple. Basically, the theory proposes that RNA, a similar molecule to DNA that executes the programming that DNA sets out, was the first biological molecule to form, and that it could perform a wide range of different reactions and processes that helped the first organisms to develop. According to this idea, the RNA could organize themselves into different sequences that did different things, in essence being the only molecule needed to perform an array of different tasks. 
they would eventually be able to construct proteins and enzymes that would then take over many of the RNA's functions in later organisms. This theory is in opposition to the hydrothermal origin, since it is clearly an RNA-first idea, unlike the hydrothermal theory, which insists that metabolism came first. There are, of course, benefits and drawbacks to each theory. More recent work done on the RNA world hypothesis has shown that it was probably not likely to have just been RNA by itself that was doing all the work in the first cells. Instead, it was more likely to have been a mixture of different forms of genetic material. DNA, RNA, and even TNA, a smaller, simpler molecule than both the others, may have been used by the earliest cells. But even if genetic material did develop first, the first organisms would still have needed to metabolize, otherwise they would have been unable to survive without any energy. This brings us to another theory about what the first part of the cell to form was. The compartmentalization first idea states that cells needed to be contained within some sort of membrane before metabolism could have occurred. This theory asserts that in order for all of the important reactions that take place in organisms to occur, they all need to be kept in one place together, since the reactions involve many chemicals and molecules interacting with each other, and for this to be achieved, the cell needs a membrane. Supporters of the argument have proposed that lipids, which naturally form spherical blobs in water, could have composed the first membranes, and would have been able to divide and control the substances that entered and left the cell but they would have had to do all this without proteins that cells today use to achieve these processes, and this does not seem convincing. So an alternative idea was created, one that combined the RNA first theory with this compartmentalization first proposal. If the first protocells, which were contained in a basic lipid membrane, contained RNA, then they might have been able to replicate and pass on genetic information. Years of experiments and research eventually confirmed that this is possible, and so instead of just RNA first or compartmentalization first, it may have been both at the same time. These discoveries open up possibilities that many different features of the first life may have arisen simultaneously, which would solve a lot of the problems involved with working out which came first. However, a recent study from this year has actually offered some support for another very old theory for the origin of life. This theory is one that Charles Darwin himself mentioned as a possible way for life to begin, all the way back in the 19th century. The idea considers the possibility that life did not have its beginnings down in the depths of the ocean, but instead originated in warm little ponds, as Darwin called them, on the early Earth's surface. And this study from October 2017 provides some compelling evidence for why this might be so. Scientists from Canada and Germany have developed a calculation that enabled them to show how all the necessary parts for the first life were present in ponds on the surface of the Earth. Some of these ingredients were even brought to our planet from space, according to the scientists. They have shown that nucleotides, a key component of life and necessary for the construction of RNA, were being carried by meteorites roaming around our solar system. These nucleotides were then deposited into the many ponds on the planet's surface when the meteors collided with Earth, and made the formation of RNA possible. But to form RNA, wet and dry cycles were needed to enable the necessary bonding to take place. These conditions would certainly have been present in the surface ponds, since they would have dried up and reappeared with the cycles of rain that occurred. However, the scientists say that this rules out a possible deep-sea hydrothermal vent origin, since there would have been no wet-dry cycles there, making it seem far more likely that the earliest organisms did, in fact, have their beginnings in warm little ponds, just as Darwin predicted. And it now seems that we're getting closer than ever to a far more certain answer to this captivating question, especially with the upcoming unveiling of the new Origins of Life Laboratory at McMaster University in Canada, which involves some of the Canadian researchers that contributed to the recent study. This lab is going to aim to recreate the exact conditions of the Earth just when life was starting to appear. The scientists will use all the materials needed by life that we've discussed in this video, such as membranes and genetic information, and add them into these controlled conditions. And once many hundreds of years of development have been simulated in only a few days, we will be able to get a unique view into just how every living thing on Earth began its evolution. So, to conclude, there are a great many different and competing theories for the origin of life on Earth, but something that all these theories agree on is that in order to function as a living thing, the first organisms probably needed a membrane, genetic material, and something to catalyze the important reactions of life. But just which part came first, and where they came from, still remains actively debated. 
but we live at an exciting time for research into life's origin, and we are beginning to develop a far clearer picture of what exactly happened back in the mists of deep time that led to all of this wonderful life. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you would like to learn more about our world and explore more of the mysteries of life, please feel free to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the rest of this series.